Welcome everyone. Today's video is based on the symptom of movement restriction or the movement disorders faced during mobility. These mobility disorders can actually restrict your balance and have aggravated difficulties in lift limb movements as you can see in the image the lady is limping she's having she's having a limping gait so the problem arises due to muscle or nerve or joint impairment or due to some other causes we will see these causes one by one in one sided limb you have three specific things like sciatica, spinal polio and stroke. Limp is actually causing the person difficulty in moving the limb. As in case of sciatica, the sciatic nerve is affected and that nerve may affect one limb and it is going to cause pain down from the hip that is your lower back that is from your lower back region and down from the leg to the calf and the big toe if severe it may cause numbness weakness and paralysis of the buttock leg or the foot of one side of the body and causing the hip to drop and the body to lean towards the affected side. So this is now one condition where there is one sided limp. Next condition is in spinal polio, usually one sided paralysis. The body leans towards the affected side with each step. This in the image you can see the child is trying to move forward but due to the spinal polio he is affected. The polio virus has destroyed the nerve cells in his spinal cord which is causing muscle wasting and paralysis in the child. The affected leg is lifted so high that the toes clear the, clear the ground. If you could see the braces which the child has used while walking, those are having heels attached because the affected leg is lifted so higher that can only toes can touch the ground and not the heels. That is one image of spinal polio. In a limping gait. Next comes is stroke. In stroke the vessels around the brain are affected which which has caused reduced oxygen supply to the rest of the body and especially to the brain and because of this there is facial weakness and associated loss of speech and one-sided paralysis of the body which has rendered into one-sided limb and the muscle stiffness is also there on the affected side along with coordination and balance problems in stroke. Stroke is an emergency condition whenever it happens it has to be reported to the medical professional. Next comes in general muscle impairment is muscle cramps. As in case of muscles, most of them if they are working for excessive hours only in sitting position they may face muscle cramps around their legs or um, if uh, even in old age if the movements are restricted, 
uh, the person might face muscle cramps. Muscle cramps are sudden involuntary and can last from seconds to minutes. There is generally a contraction of the muscle which is happening, which is cause which causes severe pain and temporary in, incapacity to walk. Muscle soreness remains for a while once the cramp has ceased, more likely in tired muscle and especially at night. Another case in case of muscle impairment is restless leg syndrome. It is an unpleasant feeling in legs and you have the urge to move, around, move the legs, both the legs and it is worst at rest especially at night. More likely associated with anemia, kidney failure, even diabetes and even in case of pregnancy. So the leg is actually restless in one position when he's trying to lie down. This is this has happened due to muscle impairment. They have the unpleasant feeling to just move the legs up and down, up and down. Next comes in general muscle impairment is polymyalgia rheumatica. In this, there is area of pain around the shoulders and the hip joint. Especially in the morning, there is stiffness and pain around neck, shoulder, upper arm and hips and may cause difficulty in getting up from your bed or even in fact, even raising the arms above the shoulder height. This case occurs in case of polymyalgia rheumatica. Poly means many and myalgia means muscle pain and rheumatica in the joints. Another case in muscle impairment is chronic fatigue syndrome. If you are working for hours and hours and you are severely fatigued, then it may result in exhaustion, muscle pain, poor sleep, in fact, lack of concentration and impaired memory and can cause pain in multiple joints and may often lead to dizziness. You might feel drowsy and certain kind of balance problems. This has happened when you're working for long hours without taking a break, without giving your body a rest, this causes chronic fatigue syndrome. That's why it is always advised to take rest. Next comes is generalized nerve impairment disorders, especially focusing on the nerve. Alzheimer's disease, as in case of Alzheimer's, which is a nerve impairment disease, you can see a progressive disease that destroys memory and other mental functions. From in the image, you can see the healthy brain distinguished from Alzheimer's brain. The Alzheimer's brain is high kind, so, sort of compressed and the brain cells and the cells themselves degenerate as in case of Alzheimer's and it eventually destroys the memory. In case of Alzheimer's, they have a slow and wide, way, wide based walking pattern. The gait or the walking pattern is of a conscious walking and due to memory problems, there is poor judgment mood changes, anxiety, agitation, and a lot of behavioral changes. This generally happens in old age, so it has to be prevented. Next comes in nerve impairment is multiple sclerosis. Even in multiple sclerosis, there is uncoordinated walk with irregular steps. 
but this is happening due to the nerve cells. In this case, you can see a healthy nerve cell with one cell's node of Ranvier and nerve fiber. But when the nerve is affected in multiple sclerosis, there is damaged myelin, myelin and the exposed fiber. So the nerve cell is being affected in multiple sclerosis, exposing the covering of the nerve cell, which is known as myelin. So along with this, there is irregular steps and feet are wide apart and uncoordinated walk in multiple sclerosis. And they generally have difficulty in walking with one foot in front so these are some problems due to multiple sclerosis and multiple sclerosis is one of the nerve impairment disorder next comes in nerve impairment disorder is parkinsonism parkinsonism there is involuntary tremors and that can even occur at rest even slow movements muscle stiffness is there shuffling walk stoop, stooped posture expressionless face depression so this is one condition with tremor rigidity bradykinesia bradykinesia is short shuffling steps another nerve impairment disorder next is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis where there is progressive rapid progressive muscle weakness wasting of the voluntary muscles and which might lead into an inability to walk in this you can see a normal nerve with a healthy nerve fiber and healthy muscle alongside it there is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis affected nerve affected nerve fiber and the nerve fiber endings has caused as it is affected it has caused muscle wasting in this condition this causes inability to walk grip or swallow properly next condition in nerve impairment is spinal muscle atrophy as the word says, affecting spinal means the spinal cord. So you can see a normal nerve muscle, and there is another muscle which is atrophied. Atrophy, atrophy of muscle which is weak. The muscle is has become weak or wasted. The spinal muscle atrophy has occurred affected the nerve and muscle cell means it has degenerated or it has it is not degenerated but it has been reduced in size as because of the atrophy of the muscle there is muscle weakness floppy limbs and impairment of mobility weakness in cuff even respiratory muscles are affected in this next comes in nerve impairment is Huntington's disease in Huntington's there is poorly coordinated jerky movements and persistently bent knees but in this image I have showed you about those cross section of the ventricles these are the normal brain sections in one image you can see the normal brain section with normal frontal horns of lateral ventricles and in Huntington's it happens that there is enlargement of the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles because of this there is poor coordination jerky movements and often uncontrolled arm and head movements our next topic in this is joints 
when the joints are affected or impaired. As in case of arthritis, you can see a normal joint picture and an arthritic joint flask shaped hand we call in arthritic joints. There is erosion occurring in arthritis. There is pain, swelling and limitation of movement of joint. Maybe due to various type of arthritis, rheumatoid, septic, reactive, psoriatic and joint stiffness may be worse in the morning and can cause trouble sleeping. It commonly affects the hands, knees, hips and spine and can render restricted movement of the limbs. As in case of ankylosing spondylitis, you can see in the image there is a normal vertebrae and a fused vertebrae. This has happened because of long standing and increasing lower back pain or spinal stiffness, inflamed joints, tendons and fatigue which has resulted in reduced mobility. In some cases, person may be hunched over or could have a hunched back. This is one condition. The joints of the vertebrae are affected. Next in general joint impairment is systemic lupus erythematosus or specially called SAD. There is butterfly rashes over the face and as it is an autoimmune condition, there could be painful joints, swollen, extreme tiredness, skin rashes of face, wrist, hands and face. Commonly the butterfly shaped rash on nose and cheeks. Along with this autoimmune condition, there is intense joint pain which can render a person helpless. Helpless in the sense of restricted mobility. This is all, this is a flow chart of what I have discussed till now. One sided limb, spinal polio, stroke, sciatica, in nerve impairment, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, spinal muscle atrophy, Huntington's, and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, along with in general generalized joint impairment, SLE arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, even in muscle impairment, polymyalgia rheumatica, restless leg syndrome, muscle cramps, chronic fatigue syndrome. If you, if you feel this is useful, then you can take a screenshot of it. Thank you for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and don't forget to comment if you find this useful.